guys, the bad guys. So let's start off with the economy. From your perspective, I mean, are we still heading towards this recession, depression, collapse? Where are we right now? Well, the, the manipulation is still going on. So all markets, including the stock market, the metals market, the bond market, the U.S. dollar, is all being controlled via computers and computer programs out of the Fed and the in the basement of the U.S. Treasury. They have a trading floor. And so, yeah, everything looks on the market side. Everything looks like everything's normal. Nothing to worry about. Stock market continues to go to all time highs, even though every single metric you want to measure says we are beyond a bubble now. Um, so, yeah, th- everything's trudging right along. Now, the question is going to be, when are they going to pull the plug on this game? Because more and more people have come to realize that the markets are rigged. And do you want to be in a rigged market at the height of a bubble or or do you want to be far, far away? I think a lot of people uh, are thinking far, far away. And far, far away means physical metal in your own possession. It means holding as many good cryptocurrencies and uh, blockchain type companies as you can as you can hold in your portfolio in your own possession. So, yeah, I think we're right on the brink. A, a good I would say a good side, a good sign from the good guys is that. Um, Steve Bannon has left the Trump administration. He was like the last good guy, you know, who was sticking to what Trump promised. He promised to drain the swamp and he just filled the White House with other swamp people. So I think uh, Bannon leaving is a great sign that they're about to pull the plug because you don't want the plug, to, you know, the, the destruction of the economy to happen because of all the changes that Trump put in place. Right now, they're not letting him change anything. So he's going to basically let the system fall apart and say, hey, it's not my fault. You, you're the guys who, who stopped me from doing all the things I wanted to do. We should have, I should have been able to choose who I want in my own cabinet. I should have been able to do all these things to make America great again. But you, the media and the deep state, decided uh, that you weren't going to let me. So you know, let the system fall apart. So, so you're saying that people that he has right now, I mean, I think the Republicans and those people who are, you know, maybe with him, maybe not with him, they're the ones who chose who should be in his administration. He really didn't have a choice in, in the matter. Maybe he may have had some suggestions, but most of the people there, it looks like they were, you know, put there without him really saying, yes, I really want this person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's what happened. You know, the, the people he did choose all got out, outed. <laughs> you know, they, they all yes. got kicked out for one reason or another. Um, and, you know, it's not a Republican Democrat thing, really. It's the deep state. It's these people who control our lives that uh, that are that have all the control and that abuse all the control. And when the system falls apart, you know, it's one of those things where now Trump is free to drain the swamp before he couldn't do it. Now he can. So in draining the swamp, all you have to do is, you know, release the 650,000 emails that they have from uh, Uma Abedin, you know, Hillary Clinton's left hand girl, so to speak. Uh, Hillary Clinton was not very technologically savvy. So she gave Uma Abedin the keys to all her files and everything so that uh, Uma could print out things for Hillary. And and Uma's mother is uh is the head of the Muslim sisterhood. So it, it's really, it's just a bad situation, but they have all these documents, 650,000 uh, emails, documents, videotape, uh, phone conversations that incriminate. I heard it's a third of Congress will go to jail. I think that's an amazing tool that Trump has at his disposal. If he wants to go out with a bang and drain the swamp, just let those loose. You know, before WikiLeaks ha- does it, <laughs> obviously WikiLeaks has them all too. So I, I say let that information out there and, and let the chips fall where they may. You know, I, I know what you're saying, but I, I just want to back up for one sec because we see how the corporate media, you know, how they basically attack him every step of the way. And if he did release this information, and I'm not saying that he shouldn't or he should, but I don't think the corporate media would actually actually um, televise it, would actually report on it. No, they wouldn't. You know, they wouldn't they, they because wouldn't. they're in it. They're, they're in right. these documents. <laughs> yeah. So no, they wouldn't. But. That's the thing. Will the corporate media survive that kind of scandal? No. If you know that the upper echelon of CNN and Fox and ABC are all involved in these just horrific things, crimes against humanity, those companies will not be around. 
I mean, I think in, in the position that he's in right now, I think he has more than Clinton's uh, emails. I think he has, you know, pretty much, you know, everything the intelligence agencies probably have. He has access to. He has access to pretty much almost everything. So he really, I, I mean, my personal opinion, I, I think he knows what's going on. I think he re- he, he understands. I think right now uh, he's stuck. There's, I mean, I, I, mean well, I, I think he's at that point where yeah, yeah, on, on one level he is stuck, but he can also release everything. He can release all this information and put all these people in in prison if he if he chooses to do so. Will it be disruptive for for the United States? Absolutely. It would destroy the the false edifice that we have built and spent so many decades building this 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 economic system and social system and I mean, but it's all so fragile and so weak. All it takes is the release of a little bit of inf- of this information to take the whole thing down. But I, I'd say if I was Trump and, and I felt stuck that I couldn't save America instead of, you know, having them, you know, suicide me or, or having me resign or whatever, I would release that information and let Americans take their country back take it out of the hands of these people. I, I, I can see where you're going with that, and I, and I understand that, but I can see from, like, Charlottesville and the way people are reacting to what's going on, I think, like, the George Soros of the world and others, they would release their minions. But that's the thing. George they, Soros would be implicated. The the yeah. people of the world will be going after people like George Soros and the Rothschilds and, and the bad guys because all— all this information that Trump has could indict all these people who have done anything illegal. So the war wouldn't be, you know, you cut off the money to George Soros or the Rothschilds or the Rockefellers and those guys. No one, none of their henchmen are going to do their dirty work. You know, they hire mercenaries based on the fiat money that uh, they're given by, you know, George Soros. So if they can't pay people off, those people will turn on, on their, uh, on their bosses really fast. I, I think we've seen that already started with the, with the Clinton family when they kind of got out of, you know, out of the spotlight, so to speak, and, and went into hiding, which is where they are now, if they're even alive right now. I think uh, a lot of the people who were working for them, who are, they are no longer paying through the Clinton, you know, the Clinton, the, was it the, the, the global initiative, the Clinton global initiative, their charity work, right. millions of dollars. That's what was, that was all payoff money. And now that these people aren't getting paid off and these governments aren't getting paid off, there's no loyalty to the Clintons anymore. The same thing would happen with if, if we release all this information and, uh, you know, George Soros is implicated. That means everybody who works for him will be implicated as well. So, you know, being worried that George Soros will unleash his, his uh, people to start a civil war or anything like that, I'm not worried. You know, if, if he's exposed for what he is, and the people below him are exposed for what they are. Who would who would be fighting for and against them? You know. And if if the agenda of the far left is exposed, if, if George Soros's agenda of trying to divide the country and start a you know a civil war is exposed, then you know who would go to who would be fighting a civil war? People would wake up to how they've been conditioned all these years. And I think that that's the kind of information that Trump needs to get out there. Yeah, and I also think he needs to really cut off, like you said, the flow of money to the intelligence agencies, to many of these congressmen, because, I mean, they're getting a lot of free money, a lot of corporate money, a lot of dark pools of funds where, just like like um, McCain and the rest, where, you know, they, they use this to create, you know, the Islamic State, to create what is happening in U- Ukraine. And if we can cut all of this off, we can cut off, you know, the the elite, the deep state, the cabal, you know, everyone has different names for them. We we can actually stop it. But 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 how, I mean, is that even possible? It, it, the only way I see possible was the original way I thought they were going to do it, it to, is to destroy the unbacked fiat system with der- the derivative bubble blowing. Now, clearly, if the derivative bubble goes, everything goes. So, yes, that would cut off money to the deep state, cut off money to George Soros, but it cuts off money to everything. It, you know, nobody would have anything. And that's kind of where the cryptos come in. And the, the good guys, as I call them, are trying to develop another means of exchange right, going right alongside the U.S. dollar. So as the dollar dies and fiat money dies and the funding of the bad guys die, then – You've got the growth of something different, something 
trustworthy, something unique right here with the cryptocurrencies and all these blockchain companies that are starting up. So I, I do think that's a, it's kind of a transition mechanism, how to get out of this bad system that we've been stuck in for so long into something new. Um, but the key to all that is the truth and reconciliation of putting people behind bars who did criminal deeds. And you can't just sweep them under the rug like they, you know, they're trying to sweep all the Clinton crimes under the rug. But you can't do that. You know, it, it's one of those things. There's so many crimes committed by the, the Clintons and the, the whole Democratic Party and the Republican Party that everybody knows about, but nothing is done about it. And that's what needs to change. And if we are going to return to an honest system, honest form of governance based on the Constitution, yes, you put people who <laughs> uh, people who do crime need to go to jail. It's that simple. They, you, you can't just you know hide all your thirty thousand emails and say, "Oh, I, I I don't know what happened to them. They're just gone." And oh, by the way, I smashed all my blackberries with hammers. All those things are against the law if you work for the, you know, have that kind of clearance as Secretary of State. That's all, every single one of those, you know, she should be in jail. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that she should be in jail, and she's not. So how, how has it happened that, that people higher up get to commit these crimes and just walk away from it? Yeah, because there's, there's two set of laws. I mean, there's a set of laws for them and there's a le- set of laws for the people. I mean, I mean, you go back to Obamacare. I mean, everyone in government, they should have dropped their plans and taken Obamacare and showed America, look, look how great this is. We dropped what we had and we took Obamacare. But just from that, you can see there's really two set of rules right now. And, you know, they can commit all the crimes. They can do whatever they want. And, you know, no, nobody really does anything. And when, when uh, I mean, I say the corporate media is the mouthpiece for the deep state. I mean, that's they talk through the corporate media and um, you can see they have right now they still have control in a certain way, because when you go to an airport, what's on the TV? CNN. CNN. Well, they had they they had the contract. Every place you go, you don't see you don't see, you know, your channel. You don't see my channel. (laughs) You see the corporate media. So everyone is just always being bombarded with that. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's I mean, there is a mass mass brainwash going on all around the world. But that's that's what Trump can can change. And all he has to do to win this fight is to expose the crimes of those people running the system right now. And he can do that, but it will be massively disruptive to humanity, to our current, you know, the stock market would go to zero all of a sudden. There'd be no ATMs flowing. There'd be no money out there. You know, that's the, always been the reason why these bad guys were allowed to continue what they're doing is that the disruption that it would cause if the system was shut down by something like, you know, a third of Congress going to jail would blow the derivative bubble and the derivative bubble would take out every financial institution, meaning that there would be no commerce at all. And we'd have to start with something new. And again, it gets back to the cryptos. I think the cryptos are, are are building up a base and an infrastructure and, and every single industry out there can implement a truth machine and blockchain technology to take out the criminality of their industry. And we're seeing that in in all kinds of things, all kinds of new companies being built up. And I think it's an amazing thing because the the, the ultimate crash, when, when the old system crashes for good, we'll have something to turn to to say, oh my God, we don't trust anybody in government anymore because look what they did, you know. A third of them are in, sitting in jail because they were allowed to do all this stuff. But we don't have to trust anybody with the blockchain technology, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the cryptocurrencies. I like Litecoin because this is a trustless system. You don't have to trust anybody. It's all math. As long as two plus two equals four, you can trust that that transaction is real in the crypto sphere. And whereas on the, on another front it it comes down to trusting the government trusting the federal reserve trusting that the government's not printing money and not telling anybody about it which is i believe they do all the time of course they don't print it they just add a couple zeros to the electronic money that they create but i don't think they tell anybody about it because there's they're the ones enforcing the law on them on themselves so yeah it's a crazy system I think the old system is on its way out and a new system is on its way in and it's really exciting. 
Yes, and we could see like Russia and China, I mean, they're moving away from the dollar. Many countries are moving away from the dollar. And I just wanted to get, I mean, you've been talking about the cryptocurrencies, but let's just stay on this topic for a sec. Now, you've been talking about how, you know, the, the fiat or some people say fiat system is falling apart and eventually it's going to collapse and, you know, things are going to hit rock bottom. Are they using the cryptocurrencies right now to make it a softer type of landing? Uh, yes, yes and no. I mean, those people who think it's a, a big conspiracy that they, you know, the governments, this is how they're going to go cashless, they control all the cryptos and all that because they invented cryptocurrencies. Um, truthfully, I do think the U.S. government was involved in the creation of Bitcoin. It's their job to be involved in that. It's the U.S. Treasury and the Fed's job to be in uh, aware of and working towards the sound monetary system. So yes, the CIA, the NSA, the Fed, and the Treasury were all involved, I think, in the early days of Bitcoin, in the early days of uh, all the previous um, electronic cash forms. Because there were, before Bitcoin, there were other things. There was just a double spending problem. And that's the big thing that Bitcoin solved was the bu double spending issue. Um, so yeah, the government's been involved, but but you know, to say that the government is always evil, always out to do the worst thing for humanity, um, I don't believe that at all. And as a matter of fact, the road to Ruta theory comes right from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, who talks about taking down the big guys, you know, taking out these people who control our lives and returning to a gold standard was the plan. So, and that's w within the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. So there are people. You just look at the new $100 bill. If you pull out the new $100 bill, it, one side of it is, is absolutely covered with gold and talks about the part in their uh, Declaration of Independence where uh, we're overthrowing the government. <laughs> That's what it says on, on the new $100 bill. And I do think that majority within government is clueless, but there are good guys and bad guys within government. And I've been showing that, exposing that for, you know, since I started the Road to Ruta Theory, I discovered it in 2007. And more and more of it's coming true. As soon as Alan Greenspan got out of office, what did he say? I think we should think about going back to a gold standard. His job when he was the head of the Fed was not to uh, you know, cause havoc on the world, although he did. His job was to control the unbacked fiat monetary system with the computer programs that he wrote in the 60s and 70s. And to run the system as long and hard as he could, soaking up all the wealth and all the benefits of unbacked fiat money, build roads and bridges and, uh, you know, give money, give free things to everybody until you blow the bubble so big that it implodes and you return to a gold standard. That was always the plan. And it kind of got taken over by the bad guys within the banks. And then the battle right now is to, to take that back that power. And that's what Trump is working with the people behind the scenes to do. Um, so are the cryptocurrencies good or bad for humanity? It's like any new technology. It depends what you use it for. And I don't see that the, the people who control our monetary system today will be the ones deciding the monetary system of the future if the one they have right now gets destroyed. No, we won't believe anything the World Bank says or the IMF says or, or the guys at the Fed or the guys in, you know, in charge of J.P. Morgan Chase. Those aren't going to be the people who are deciding what our next monetary system is. It will be the people deciding, truthfully, and that, and that gets right to the cryptocurrencies. Uh, do you think the crypto market, the blockchain technology, is advanced enough or, um, I guess, out there enough to take over from what we have today? Because if the system, let's say the system crashes this fall, or maybe even 2018 or 2019, I mean, is it possible to move on to a, a blockchain type of system? Uh, well, I, I, I see more of a transition. You know, clearly more and more places are, are taking Bitcoin now. And with all these Bitcoin credit cards, I mean, I have a, a credit card from BitPay. I mean, it, you have to convert it into a U.S. dollar, but it's they hold your crypto. So in essence, you're, you're buying things with Bitcoin anywhere that takes Visa and MasterCard. So it's not all that hard. Um, but I, I don't think it'll happen overnight. I think it'll be a transition. The old system will continue to die. The cryptocurrencies, these companies will continue to build out. There's more and more types of wallets to make it, you know, less confusing than it is right now. And as the cryptocurrency economy grows, which is obviously growing, everybody who says it's in a bubble and hasn't bought cryptocurrencies, they will be buying cryptocurrencies in 2018, 2019, and, and on into the future. 
And you can say it's a bubble all you want, but I, I believe it's the very, very – we're not even in the first inning of this baseball game. People are still warming up in the batter's box and taking some, you know, some fly balls out there in outfield before the game starts. You know, the real exciting thing is going to be when the system, the bankers, start fumbling again because we all know they're on the brink once again of coming apart. And people will say, oh, my God, what, what can we do? We either bail out these bankers again and give them everything they want or what else can we do? Oh, we have these things called cryptocurrencies sitting right here, functioning in, in an economy that is very small at the beginning. We've been calling it a bubble, but it's tiny compared to everything else. And we can use it because we don't have to trust government at all. And I think it, it, it'll be, it won't happen that fast. It, it's already happening. It's in the process of happening. The old system's dying, and this new system is growing very fast. Um, but it's not even close to a bubble. So yeah, I, I think I think it's possible that uh, the transition can be smoother than it would have been if you if you take out the bad guys and the banksters, and all of a sudden, you know, the just in time delivery system will make sure that <laughs> millions and millions of people die because they they won't get any food, water, electricity, or anything. You know, if if the economy shuts down. So how does precious metals play into this? Because you know, there's a lot of people saying, well, you have to own gold or silver. You can't. You know, that that's the real store of wealth. Cryptocurrencies, you know, it's based on absolutely nothing. And, you know, I don't want to own any of that. I, I per personally, I feel that, you know, both have, um, you, you need to have both in this economy. I wanted to get your take on what you think or what people should do or should they own precious metals? Do you still think precious metals are important or do you think just cryptocurrencies are important? Um, now I see, well, hi historically, precious metals have been money for uh, you know, 5,000 years. So yes, precious metals have the history of every failed currency, failed currency scheme in the past 5,000 years. When they failed, they always went back to gold and silver for a couple of reasons. You know, there's the obvious ones, the scarcity issues and, and things like that. But we have a problem now. And that problem is that for the past, well, since 1933, I think, uh, past close to 100 years, we haven't really used precious metals as money. Maybe silver, when the silver uh, was used as coinage, but, you know, not really. And so we, we kind of went away from that. And the problem we have today is, one, nobody owns any, very few people own gold and silver. Uh, but every time in the history of history of money, Everybody still had gold and silver. They just started using, using like, you know, Mississippi land grants and, and things like that as a different form of money. It would crash the Confederate money. And then they go back to gold and silver because nobody trusted that new system fully. So they always held on to it. This has been going wrong for so long that we haven't used precious metals as money that all the new generations have no idea of the significance of gold and silver as money. So it, it, would, it would have to we'd have to retrain everybody and nobody has any. But they, they do know how to use credit cards. They, they know how to use electronic money. And that in the, up until 2007, yeah, I would say the Federal Reserve 2008 was, was December of 2008, I think, when Satoshi published his white paper. And then January was the first blockchain or uh, the first uh, block was mined. I think that's something like that. So prior to that, yeah, everybody would have gone back to gold and silver because it's all they could go back to. They don't trust the government to reissue new money because they're the ones who screwed it up in the first place. So, but now we do have another choice, and that is the cryptocurrencies. And it has all the same or similar attributes as gold and silver, except one very important thing that I think the, the Bitcoin blows away gold and silver is the scarcity factor. There will only be 21 million Bitcoins made yes there are other cryptocurrencies just like there are other metals we could use for money like you know copper and zinc i mean a lot of them are used for money today um so i i do think you need both as far as gold i, I think silver will be way too valuable as an industrial commodity it's been held back for so long and is so undervalued in comparison to any other commodity because they had to they had to rig the silver market and that's where it stands. So I think silver will far surpass the price of gold because silver is needed in all these new technologies. Gold, on the other hand, 
Um, I do own, I think, one ounce of gold. And the reason I do is for <laughs> historical purposes. Not because I do think gold will go up in U.S. dollar values, but that's that's more a function of the dollar. And some people will still hold on to gold, but you know it would be we'd have to train the whole population, the younger population. Anybody younger than 50 years old doesn't really understand the significance and history of gold and silver as money. Um, so I, I think some of the banks will hold on to gold, but and there's a lot more gold out there than they're telling us. Um, and there's all kinds of research. You, know, you read uh, uh, it was Gold Warriors by Sterling and Peggy Seagrave. They spent their whole lives searching the, the documentation and, and pr- have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt there's over 300,000 tons of gold that was found in the Philippines after World War II and the black budgets that, that sprung up from all that. So there's nobody knows how much gold is out there. Um, I don't think anybody knows the amount of silver out there either. And and none of it goes away. It's all somewhere. It, that's the funny thing is, you know, people say, well, silver is consumed in, in electronics and, you know, solar power, uh, solar uh, panels. Yeah, it is, but it, it doesn't go away. It ends up in landfills. And, and the, the big thing about silver, the unique thing is that it is split up into such tiny particles in the industrial applications because it's the best conductor of electricity. It's almost impossible to, to extract that, that silver from all these used up solar panels and you know, flat screen TVs. So it's not that it's gone. It's still on planet earth. It just is in such tiny particles that it would be impossible to, to get most of that silver back. So it's gone forever. I just wanted to take the other side. I mean, you said that, you know, right now nobody has uh, gold or silver, so they don't know, they wouldn't know what to do with gold or silver, where to get it. And But the same thing, it, it's the same thing with cryptocurrency. There's very few people that actually own cryptocurrency. I mean, I went, you know, I've been talking to friends that, you know, they heard Bitcoin, but nobody really owns it. So if something does happen, it seems like the population neither has gold or silver or cryptocurrency. You're correct. Absolutely correct. And but that's changing on the on the cryptocurrency side. More and more people are coming on to learn about the cryptos and get involved. I do think the United States of America owns the Satoshi Nakamoto Bitcoin credits. So Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin, I think is part of the CIA or the NSA or some government agency. They definitely were involved in the early days. I uh, he still has the, the original million coins that he um, he had mined. They haven't been spent. You can see where they are on the blockchain. Um, I think that's part of the United States plan to distribute those coins to the population um, when this the big shift is required. And probably 2018, I would think that the, the old system dies enough that uh, the United States has to come out and say, okay, you know, we kind of screwed up monetarily we printed too much money yes we're the largest debtor nation in the world so we're going to we're going to win on that front because we won't have to pay back uh, any debt but we do have these million uh bitcoin tokens and we can go onto a bitcoin standard and here's how the fdic is going to allocate it to humanity um that's one possible way because that's what they were going to do with gold they do have a lot of gold and they were going to allocate and, and that's the big thing about the road to ruta stuff if you read the Road to Ruta comic books out of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, a big part of that is how to allocate the what they called colored flowers, which was representative of money. But how do you allocate it to the population? And the way they did it in the comic book is by age. So the oldest people got the first money. And, and it makes sense. And it's kind of a reason why they haven't messed with Social Security balances. Because if all the money is gone, all of a sudden – Social Security balances, yeah, if all money is gone, you can you can live off your Social Security because you'll be the richest people in the world. Um, so if it's allocated according to Social Security balances, I think that's a fairly fair way to reallocate money when uh, the system shuts down and, and the U.S. is like, okay, you know, time to start again. Um, clearly, they're not going to pay off any debt, and that was never the plan. I don't think there's going to be any agreement at the last minute uh, come the end of September when the budget uh, – uh, issues come up and they got to vote on, you know, expanding the deficit and all that. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're ready to turn out the lights on that uh, chapter in the sad chapter of unbacked fiat money 
since you know 1913. So those people, I mean, I mean, from what I'm hearing you're saying right now is that those people that still have fiat currency. I mean, I think the last time you were on that you're saying that that is just going to disappear in their bank accounts and their pensions. You, you, are you still holding to that? Yeah, I, I do because I mean, if you look at the amount of you know, it's like it's a wonderful life. Anybody who goes in to to pull their money out of the bank, as long as it's only one or two people, everything's fine. But because they're leveraged lenders, they're leveraged ten or fifteen to one. Uh, if just you know ten percent go in to pull out their money, they, the bank has no uh, tier one capital, and that's all tier one capital is how they get their money out there, um, and that's what causes the bank runs and things like that. That that money is not liquid; they can't give it back to people who who have invested you know, given the bank their money. So you're going to start to see banks crash and, and, and then everybody's going to call into question the soundness of their uh, electronic money and where they have it stored. If you, if you talk about the stock market, unbelievable fraud going on at every brokerage house. They don't actually go buy the shares that you invest in. They have a pool and you get put into the pool and that's how these high frequency trades happen in milliseconds is because these the shares are never settled and never put in your name. You're not given a certificate. It's all hidden at uh, the DTCC in, in a, an entity known as Seed and Company. Um, even the SEC says there's over 300 million failure to delivers every single day on the on the stock market. A failure to deliver meaning no shares trade hand. The, the certificates don't trade hands. The money doesn't trade hands. And the uh, transfer of title doesn't trade hands. So what happens? It's all a, it's a game of musical chairs. And as soon as some people start pulling their money out or, or trying to get their shares, you're going to find that you know of you know, Apple stock has a billion shares out there, but they they have ten billion people who claim to own Apple stock. So how is that possible? It's done in pools, and the banks use and bro- banks and brokerage house use that that pool of shares. And money to you know leverage up their earnings. Um, so it, the the fraud is is everywhere from the printing of money to the the exchanging of um, shares of stock in the stock market. So there's fraud everywhere in the system, and that's what the the blockchain technologies are uh, will replace because it's a it's a truth machine. That's the technology. When you hear blockchain technology, all that means is it's a truth machine that you can't lie about. You can't lie to. All the transactions are there and approved by everybody. You can see it. it. Two plus two equals four, always. Are you worried about the central bankers, the the deep state taking control of the crypto market? I mean, you could see that they have one bill. Well, I mean, there's one bill that's out there saying that, you know, they want Coinbase and others to, you know, give them a list of all the people that have been cashing out of Coinbase making a profit because they want to go after those individuals and for tax purposes. Are you worried about the central bank and all the all the different groups trying to take control of the blockchain technology or, you know, maybe have them administer the blockchain so they have full control of it? Are you worried about that? Uh, I am not worried about that at all. Not one bit. I think, uh, I don't even think they want to in the United States. That's you know that's the battle between the good guys and the bad guys. The U.S. has been looking for a way out of this old system for a long, long time, going all the way back to the you know probably the founding of our country, um, and we've been looking for a way out, and there hasn't been a way out. The cryptos offer a way out. So as you can see in the United States and pretty much around the world, the laws are very, very, very few. I mean, they could they could they could have stopped Bitcoin on day one if they wanted. But I don't think they want to. I think they do want humanity to take over that part of uh, the economic system, the monetary part, because people can't obviously can't <laughs> be in charge of it because we abuse it every time we have, are given the reins to print free money. Um, there's rumors of a, a ACC blockchain that sprang up in the cryptocurrency world and the uh, and the uh, the metals world. Um, and will the banks put all their, all the assets of the world onto an ACC blockchain? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I would say they own them already. So what does it matter? You know, they own all the assets of the world in, uh, in, in seed and company at the DTCC where it owns all the mortgage backed derivatives, all the, all the, all the everything. If you're looking for who owns shares of stock and who owns your house and who owns the title to your car and things like that. 
it all goes back to seed and company and, and that big conspiracy there. So if they transfer all those assets that are already on in their own control into a blockchain, there's no difference. They already control it all. So I, I don't see any problem with that. And, and if they were smart, they'd do it because there's a lot of criminality and fraud within the DTC, DTCC and seed and company. And I think that's what Blythe Masters is, is trying to do to transfer all these, these criminal ownership papers into something blockchain related. But that doesn't change anything. All it means is once you get on, if it's an honest blockchain with, that without centralization, um, that would be great, but it, it's probably the last thing they want to do because they can't be honest. <laughs> These guys are criminals, and any kind of a blockchain that has central control, uh, they're talking about a super node where all transactions have to go through the super node. That's not a blockchain. Tra- that's not a blockchain chain technology. The blockchain technology is about decentralization. So yeah, I mean they can put their own assets that they already control into an ACC chain or something like that, but there's no difference. That doesn't change anything. They already own those or claim to own it legally. And then you get to enforceability. You know, if, if, the, if the powers that be want to destroy humanity, um, they need armies. They need people to enforce their rules and their laws. And when the exposure of all this criminality happens, which I think uh, will happen fairly soon, as the monetary system breaks down, they can't pay off the people who are, you know, hiding the secrets. Um, humanity can say, oh, my God, you guys are trying to do this. Well, no, we're not going to let you. And you don't have anything to throw at us. You don't have you don't control the army anymore. You don't control the Navy or the police anymore because you were exposed. All your crimes were exposed. And we know who you are and what you did. So, no, we're not going to give you control of us anymore. And that that comes down to people standing up for themselves when they get the information, when Trump releases all the information on the, the criminality in Washington, then people can decide, oh, my God, we've been lied to. We were, everything was stolen from us. Uh, by the way, all these deeds and mortgages and everything. No, we're not going to pay them back because they stole them from us in the first place. And they didn't have the money to lend us. They created it out of thin air. So all that stuff comes to a head. Humanity will have a chance to stand up and say, all right, you guys are out. Central banks are out, the IMF is out, the World Bank, the BIS, everything. You guys screwed up, you're criminals. We're going to prosecute you on an individual basis, and then we're going to start with something new. I think that's that's where we're headed. It, and it's not going to be overnight. I think it'll be over the next four or five years. So you think, so, uh, I mean, when you say in the next four or five years, you're saying the transition, I mean, all of this that we're going through right now, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this is part of the transition that we're, we're yeah, seeing. yeah, it's, it's, it has started. I, I think it, it started probably in earnest after the 2008 crash, uh, which was computer generated from the Fed. That's how it all started. Um, and I, I think uh, the good guys, that's when they started taking over and taking back the country. That's when the uh, right around that time is when the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston released the road to root it up documents. And the only change in the, the two comic books, the one from 1981 and the one from 2007, was what Ruta wrote in the sand um, when she was figuring out how to allocate assets to people. In the original one, she, she wrote an asset allocation model called On the Road to the Golden Age. And in the 2007 version all that all those formulas were gone and all she wrote in the sand was 11 plus 9 for 9-11 crazy stuff and i think that's why these bad guys are being taken out now the end of the road to ruta the end of the computer manipulation is due to what happened to the united states on 9-11 and and who was involved in it behind the scenes i think the fed is going to take those guys down and and start fresh and that's kind of the road to ruta theory in a in a, a real small nutshell there's so much proof behind it that i've offered up so yeah check out road to ruta if you want to <laughs> find out the rest of that story bix thank you very much for being on the x22 report spotlight i really appreciate it uh once again how can people see your work uh you can go to road to ruta.com or i have a road to ruta youtube channel that i do uh almost daily uh video posts about kind of where we stand in this crazy battle. Great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being on the spotlight. Thank you, Dave.
started with the with the Clinton family when they kind of got out of you know out of the spotlight, so to speak, and, and went into hiding, which is where they are now, if they're even alive right now. I think uh, a lot of the people who were working for them, who are they are no longer paying through the Clinton, you know, the Clinton was it the 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 global initiative, the Clinton global initiative, their charity work, right. millions of dollars. That's was that was all payoff money, and now that these people aren't getting paid off and these governments aren't getting paid off, there's no loyalty to the Clintons anymore. The same thing would happen with if if we release all this information and. Uh, you know, George Soros is implicated. That means everybody who works for him will be implicated as well. So, you know, being worried that George Soros will unleash his his uh, people to start a civil war or anything like that, I'm not worried. You know, if if he's exposed for what he is, and the people below him are exposed for what they are, who would who would be fighting for and against them? You know. And if, if the agenda of the far left is exposed, if, if George Soros's agenda of trying to divide the country and start a you know a civil war is exposed, then you know who would go to who would be fighting a civil war? People would wake up to how they've been conditioned all these years. And I think that that's the kind of information that Trump needs to get out there. Yeah, and I also think he needs to really cut off, like you said, the flow of money to the intelligence agencies to many of these congressmen because i mean they're getting a lot of free money a lot of corporate money a lot of dark pools of funds where just like like um mccain and the rest where you know they they use this to create you know the islamic state to create what is happening in U- ukraine and if we can cut all of this off we can cut off you know the the elite the deep state the cabal you know everyone has different names for them we we can actually stop it but 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 how i mean is that even possible it, it, the only way i see possible was the original way i thought they were going to do it to is to destroy the unbacked fiat system with der- the derivative bubble blowing now, clearly, if the derivative bubble goes, everything goes. So, yes, that would cut off money to the deep state, cut off money to George Soros, but it cuts off money to everything. It, you know, nobody would have anything. And that's kind of where the cryptos come in. And the, the good guys, as I call them, are trying to develop another means of exchange right, going right alongside the U.S. dollar. So as the dollar dies and fiat money dies and the funding of the bad guys die, then – You've got the growth of something different, something trustworthy, something unique right here with the cryptocurrencies and all these blockchain companies that are starting up. So I, I do think that's a, it's kind of a transition mechanism, how to get out of this bad system that we've been stuck in for so long into something new. Um, but the key to all that is the truth and reconciliation of putting people behind bars who did criminal deeds. And you can't just sweep them under the rug like they, you know they're trying to sweep all the Clinton crimes under the rug, but you can't do that. You know it, it's one of those things. There's so many crimes committed by the the Clintons and the the whole Democratic Party and the Republican Party that everybody knows about, but nothing is done about it. And that's what needs to change. And if we are going to return to an honest system, honest form of governance based on the Constitution, yes, you put people who. <laughs> uh, People who do crime need to go to jail. It's that simple. They, you, you can't just, you know, hide all your thirty thousand emails and say, "Oh, I, I, I don't know what happened to them. They're just gone." And oh, by the way, I smashed all my blackberries with hammers. All those things are against the law if you work for the, you know, the, have that kind of clearance <laughs> as Secretary of State. That's all. Every single one of those, you know, she should be in jail. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that she should be in jail and she's not. So how, how has it happened that, that people higher up get to commit these crimes and just walk away from it? Yeah, because there's, there's two set of laws. I mean, there's a set of laws for them and there's a le- set of laws for the people. I mean, I mean, you go back to Obamacare. I mean, everyone in government, they should have dropped their plans and taken Obamacare and showed America, look, look how great this is. We dropped what we had and we took Obamacare. But just from that, you can see there's really two set of rules right now. And, you know, they can commit all the crimes. They can do whatever they want. And, you know, no, nobody really does anything. And when, when uh, I mean, I say the corporate media is the mouthpiece for the deep state. I mean, that's they talk through the corporate media and um, you can see they have right now they still have control in a certain way, because when you go to an airport, 
what's on the TV? CNN. CNN. Well, they had the they, they had they the contract. Every place you go, you don't see all you don't see you know your channel. You don't see my channel. <laughs> you see the corporate media. So everyone is just always being bombarded with that. Yeah, yeah, and and it's I mean there is a mass mass brainwash going on all around the world, but that's that's what Trump can can change, and all he has to do to win this fight is to expose the crimes of those people running the system right now. And he can do that, but it will be massively disruptive to humanity, to our current, you know, the stock market would go to zero all of a sudden. There'd be no ATMs flowing. There'd be no money out there. You know, that's the, always been the reason why these bad guys were allowed to continue what they're doing is that the disruption that it would cause if the system was shut down by something like, you know, a third of Congress going to jail would blow the derivative bubble. And the derivative bubble would take out every financial institution, meaning that there would be no commerce at all. And we'd have to start with something new. And again, it gets back to the cryptos. I think the cryptos are are, are building up a base and an infrastructure and, and every single industry out there can implement a truth machine and blockchain technology to take out the criminality of their industry. And we're seeing that in, in all kinds of things, all kinds of new companies being built up. And I think it's an amazing thing because the, the, the ultimate crash, when, when the old system crashes for good, we'll have something to turn to to say, oh, my God, we don't trust anybody in government anymore because look what they did. You know, a third of them are in, sitting in jail because they were allowed to do all this stuff. But we don't have to trust anybody with the blockchain technology, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the cryptocurrencies. I like Litecoin because this is a trustless system. You don't have to trust anybody. It's all math. Guys, the bad guys. So let's start off with the economy. From your perspective, I mean, are we still heading towards this recession, depression, collapse? Where are we right now? Well, the, the manipulation is still going on. So all markets, including the stock market, the metals market, the bond market, the U.S. dollar, is all being controlled via computers and computer programs out of the Fed and the in the basement of the U.S. Treasury. They have a trading floor, and so yeah, everything looks on the market side. Everything looks like everything's normal, nothing to worry about. Stock market continues to go to all time highs, even though every single metric you want to measure says we are beyond a bubble now. Um, so yeah, th everything's trudging right along. Now the question is going to be when are they going to pull the plug on this game? Because more and more people have come to realize that the markets are rigged and do you want to be in a rigged market at the height of a bubble or or do you want to be far far away i think a lot of people uh are thinking far far away and far far away means physical metal in your own possession it means holding as many good cryptocurrencies and uh, blockchain type companies as you can as you can hold in your portfolio in your own possession so yeah i think we're right on the brink a, a good i would say a good side a good sign from the good guys is that um, Steve Bannon has left the Trump administration. He was like the last good guy, you know, who was sticking to what Trump promised. He promised to drain the swamp and he just filled the White House with other swamp people. So I think uh, Bannon leaving is a great sign that they're about to pull the plug because you don't want the plug, to, you know, the, the destruction of the economy to happen because of all the changes that Trump put in place. Right now, they're not letting him change anything, so he's going to basically let the system fall apart and say, hey, it's not my fault. You, you're the guys who, who stopped me from doing all the things I wanted to do. We should have, I should have been able to choose who I want in my own cabinet. I should have been able to do all these things to make America great again. But you, the media and the deep state, decided uh, that – you weren't going to let me, so you know, let the system fall apart. So, so you're saying that people that he has right now, I mean, I think the Republicans and those people who are, you know, maybe with him, maybe not with him, they're the ones who chose who should be in his administration. He really didn't have a choice in, in the matter. Maybe he may have had some suggestions, but most of the people there, it looks like they were, you know, put there without him really saying, yes, I really want this person. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's what happened you know, the, the people he did choose all got out, outed. <laughs> you know, they, they all yes. got kicked out for one reason or another. Um, and, you know, it's not a Republican Democrat thing, really. It's the deep state. It's these people who control our lives that uh, that are that have all the control and that abuse all the control. And when the system falls apart, you know, 
it's one of those things where now Trump is free to drain the swamp. Before he couldn't do it. Now he can. So in draining the swamp, all you have to do is you know, release the 650,000 emails that they have from uh, Uma Abedin, you know, Hillary Clinton's left-hand girl, so to speak. Uh, Hillary Clinton was not very technologically savvy, so she gave Uma Abedin the keys to all her files and everything so that uh, Uma could print out things for Hillary. And as long as two plus two equals four, you can trust that that transaction is real in the crypto sphere. And whereas on the, on another front, it, it comes down to trusting the government, trusting the Federal Reserve, trusting that the government's not printing money and not telling anybody about it, which is, I believe they do all the time. Of course, they don't print it. They just add a couple of zeros to the electronic money that they create. But I don't think they tell anybody about it because there's they, they're the ones enforcing the law on, them, on themselves. So, yeah, it's a crazy system. I think the old system is on its way out and a new system is on its way in and it's really exciting. Yes. And we could see like Russia and China. I mean, they're moving away from the dollar. Many countries are moving away from the dollar. And I just wanted to get I mean, you've been talking about the cryptocurrencies, but let's just stay on this topic for a sec. Now, you've been talking about how, you know, the, the fiat or some people say fiat system is falling apart. And eventually it's going to collapse and, you know, things are going to hit rock bottom. Are they using the cryptocurrencies right now to make it a softer type of landing? Uh, yes, yes and no. I mean, those people who think it's a, a big conspiracy that, they, you know, the governments, this is how they're going to go cashless. They control all the cryptos and all that because they invented cryptocurrencies. Um, truthfully, I do think the U.S. government was involved in the creation of Bitcoin it's their job to be involved in that. It's the U.S. Treasury and the Fed's job to be in, uh, aware of and working towards the sound monetary system. So, yes, the CIA, the NSA, the Fed and the Treasury were all involved, I think, in the early days of Bitcoin, in the early days of uh, all the previous um, electronic cash forms, because there were before Bitcoin, there were other things. There was just a double spending problem. And that's the big thing that Bitcoin solved was the bu double spending issue. Um, so, yeah, the government's been involved. But, but you know, to say that the government is always evil, always out to do the worst thing for humanity, um, I don't believe that at all. And as a matter of fact, the road to Ruta theory comes right from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, who talks about taking down the big guys, you know, taking out these people who control our lives. And returning to a gold standard was the plan. So, and that's w within the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. So there are people, you just look at the new $100 bill. If you pull out the new $100 bill, it, one side of it is, is absolutely covered with gold and talks about the part in their uh, Declaration of Independence where uh, we're overthrowing the government. <laughs> that's what it says on, on the new $100 bill. And I do think that majority within government is clueless. But there are good guys and bad guys within government. And I've been showing that, exposing that for, you know, since I started the Road to Ruta Theory, I discovered it in 2007. And more and more of it's coming true. As soon as Alan Greenspan got out of office, what did he say? I think we should think about going back to a gold standard. His job when he was the head of the Fed was not to, uh, you know, cause havoc on the world, although he did. His job was to control the unbacked fiat monetary system with the computer programs that he wrote in the 60s and 70s. And to run the system as long and hard as he could, soaking up all the wealth and all the benefits of unbacked fiat money, build roads and bridges. And, and Uma's mother is, uh, is the head of the Muslim sisterhood. So it, it's really, it's just a bad situation. But they have all these documents, 650,000 uh, emails, documents, videotape, uh, phone conversations that incriminate, I heard it's the third of Congress will go to jail. I think that's an amazing tool that Trump has at his disposal. If he wants to go out with a bang and drain the swamp, just let those loose. You know, before WikiLeaks has, does it, <laughs> obviously WikiLeaks has them all too. 
So I, I say let that information out there and, and let the chips fall where they may. You know, I, I know what you're saying, but I, I just want to back up for one sec because we see how the corporate media, you know, how they basically attack him every step of the way. And if he did release this information, and I'm not saying that he shouldn't or he should, but I don't think the corporate media would actually actually um, televise it, would actually report on it. No, they wouldn't. You know, they wouldn't they because wouldn't. they're in it. They're, they're in right. these documents. <laughs> yeah. So no, they wouldn't. But- that's the thing. Will the corporate media survive that kind of scandal? No. If you know that the upper echelon of CNN and Fox and ABC are all involved in these just horrific things, crimes against humanity, those companies will not be around. I mean, I think in, in the position that he's in right now, I think he has more than Clinton's uh, emails. I think he has, you know, pretty much, you know, everything the intelligence agencies probably have. He has access to. He has access to pretty much almost everything. So he really, I, I mean, my personal opinion, I, I think he knows what's going on. I think he re, he, he understands. I think right now uh, he's stuck. There's, I mean, I, I, mean well, I, I think he's at that point where yeah, yeah, on, on one level he is stuck, but he can also release everything. He can release all this information and put all these people in in prison if he if he chooses to do so. Will it be disruptive for for the United States? Absolutely. It would destroy the the false edifice that we have built and spent so many decades building this 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 economic system and social system and I mean, but it's all so fragile and so weak. All it takes is the release of a little bit of inf- of this information to take the whole thing down. But I, I'd say if I was Trump and, and I felt stuck that I couldn't save America instead of, you know, having them, you know, suicide me or, or having me resign or whatever, I would release that information and let Americans take their country back take it out of the hands of these people. I, I, I can see where you're going with that, and I, and I understand that, but I can see from, like, Charlottesville and the way people are reacting to what's going on, I think, like, the George Soros of the world and others, they would release their minions. But that's the thing. George they, Soros would be implicated. The the yeah. people of the world will be going after people like George Soros and the Rothschilds and, and the bad guys because all— all this information that Trump has could indict all these people who have done anything illegal. So the war wouldn't be, you know, you cut off the money to George Soros or the Rothschilds or the Rockefellers and those guys. No one, none of their henchmen are going to do their dirty work. You know, they hire mercenaries based on the fiat money that uh, they're given by, you know, George Soros. So if they can't pay people off, those people will turn on, on their, uh, on their bosses really fast. I, I think we've seen that already 